Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Gabe Abner. I'm the director of, of content at Authomize. Uh, and we're joined this morning by Lauren um, Russen, sorry, Gal Diskin and William Harper. Uh, Lauren's Lauren's the SVP of product and technology at Ping Identity. Gal is the co-founder and CTO of Authomize. And Bill is the senior manager of identity services at New American Funding. Uh, and our topic this morning is automating identity security across complex enterprise cloud environments. If anything, the past couple of months have shown us that attackers are, are really able to uh, exploit identity systems and identities to, to carry out attacks. And especially when you're trying to protect large organizations at scale, it's not just the number of identities and, uh, and, and apps and cloud services that are in the mix. It's the fact that you have so many detections going on that it's hard for security teams to actually be able to tackle things in time in order to in order to prevent a real time attack. So the issue of being able to actually automate uh, the detection and then actually do something with those detections to respond automatically is becoming increasingly apparent. Uh, and with that, I would, I'd like to hand it over to to Lauren to to talk about how Ping Identity is helping to address this this issue, and we'll get started. Lauren. Yeah, thanks, Gabe. Let's advance to the next slide. For those listening, I I just have a few slides I wanted to set context, and then you know we'll save some of the conversation you know for later in the uh, the presentation. But to start with, you know, I just wanted to level set with those that are maybe not as familiar with Ping. But uh, what we do is we you know, protect every digital experience and making it frictionless at every user stage. And what that really means is that we look at every stage of a user's life cycle, ensuring that we protect every digital experience across the entire journey from that unknown to known um, and beyond. Now, if we move to the next slide. You now, it sounds great when you look at, you know, that full journey of unknown to known, but it's just really how do we do it? And with Pink, we offer a few options. First, we look at both your customer and workforce use case. We also allow you to deploy in any type of environment. And we offer a set of services beyond just single sign-on, which many of you may know us from, but adding additional capabilities. And I think it's some of these additional capabilities that are have allowed us to address some of the problems that Gabe talked about. And the first is that you know when we look at that detect side of it, it really is preventing identity fraud by detecting and then responding to those threats in real time across this entire user journey. It also includes securely managing users' identity and their profile data at scale. We have a lot of customers that scale becomes their number one issue. And with Ping, we've always supported large enterprises and be able to do that. We also um, added verification technology about two years ago, which allows for real live identity verification. And also then the ability to issue verified credentials, something that is allowing us to go into the decentralized identity realm. Next, you look at you know, the way you manage access to different resources and that ability to do consistent access to apps and resources and ensuring that they are who they say they are. That's really part of that authentication uh, game. But we also then offer very fine-grained authorization to help manage access to applications, APIs, as well as data centrally through enforcement and contextual fine-grained access policies. But to tie this all together, and something you'll see later in the slide is uh, a new product, a new capability we added about two years ago, that is uh, identity orchestration. And we refer to it quite often as an experience journey. And this platform provides the ability to orchestrate virtually you know, any kind of user experience across this life cycle from detect to verification, to profile, to authorization, and then to be able to, to authenticate and unauthorize. And do that through secure and seamless user experiences through workflows across all your identity systems. And something that's important to Ping is that this isn't just for Ping services, but that orchestration is what allows us to bring in the ecosystem of trust partners like Optimize. Let's go to the, the last slide here. And then just to highlight, when we look at you know what Ping does, how we do it, and then what we do it with, it really is on top of Ping's modern identity and access management platform. It allows you to you know, really scale across hybrid IT and multi-cloud infrastructures, regardless of where your resources, applications, and data are hosted. It doesn't matter if it's on-prem, in-cloud, Ping gives you that flexibility and scalability for the modern enterprise demand. And I think you'll see that in some of the 
conversation we have of why that's important to be able to not only um, work with Optimize that can work across multiple platforms, but also to be able to support the various enterprise infrastructures. So let me turn the time over to Gal. I think you know, we'll walk through a few slides and then we'll have a panel discussion. Cool. So at Optimize, uh, we start with a very basic question uh, of who has access to what and how are they using it? So our perspective is after you did the authorizations in a great solution like Ping and uh, you figured out from authentication to authorization, let's actually look at it from what effectively has been provisioned. And you know, sometimes something changes in the downstream application, sometimes somebody changes something in the access management platform and all of that needs to feed basically back into one view that you will see what's happening in your organization. And then the next question that we have um, is, these people, are they who they say they are? Should they have this access? So we're trying to look at the threats, but not from a, the same point of view of Ping, which does a great job on authentication. And we don't need to redo it, but horizontally across the different applications. So thinking about things like uh, credential staffing that goes across multiple applications in your environment, thinking about situations where you can't, the application doesn't support, for example, disabling a, a local login, although it also has federated login from a, an IDP. So these type of situations happen. And then the other question is, should they have this access based on your organization? And lastly, as we go forward, we come into the question of, did we set IAM right? Did somebody maliciously change the configuration? Like, I don't know, MGM recently? And uh, then are dynamic adjustments uh, are needed in order to improve my posture? So as we see an attack, do we want to dynamically adjust the controls in Ping or to actually uh, secure uh, uh, and have a better posture to resist this attack? Um, can you go to the next slide? So our platform is basically connecting as a, to first and foremost, the IAM uh, solutions, the uh, IDPs, SSOs, all the IDAS uh, solutions, uh, but it also connect, connects to SaaS and data applications uh, of various types and to cloud service providers and uh, as well as various other applications. Um, once we do, uh, we start analyzing uh, the information. We provide visibility to human and non-human identities and to the actual permissions, the usage of those, the IAM activities, the risk and the uh, roles that exist. Um, we um, take uh, and we identify issues with your uh, uh, posture uh, to, uh, to have stronger prevention on this privilege, identifying privilege escalation passes, which is really important. These are the ways that attackers don't necessarily hold privileges, but can actually gain them. Uh, integrate with those solutions to have better risk-based access control. Uh, and lastly, uh, protect these solutions themselves from uh, malicious changes to configurations or malicious activities that can be done through uh, valid functions of those solutions. Once we do that, we focus on detection. Um, we detect uh, the actual uh, account takeovers. Uh, we detect across the applications that we are connected to. Um, we uh, identify malicious activity of various types and privilege escalations and auto help you automate the response, uh, either through integration or through basic uh, actions that we support uh, internally. Um, in this uh, case, I want to talk about the very deep and very interesting integration that uh, we've built together with Ping um, around the, the workflows. And finally, we help with various forms of compliance, which I want to get into uh, in this discussion. Um, so, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we, what we've built, which is, uh, I think, very interesting, is Optimize is connecting to the various applications and the identity infrastructure to reflect the actual uh, situation. Um, as we do that, we identify various issues from different uh, uh, places and we report those both to uh, different uh, uh, existing tools, but in particular, in this case, to uh, Ping the Vinci's uh, platform. 
uh, from which uh, we trigger the response and remediation workflows that actually go and uh, uh, fix or address or adjust the posture to uh, handle the issues that were discovered. That uh, is pretty much uh, it for this part. Okay, thanks, Gal. Um, so I'd like to invite uh, Bill to, to kind of share with us a little bit of his experience. It's always very interesting for me personally when I have a chance to not just hear from, from great vendors, but then also hear from customers who are using solutions and who are actually dealing with a lot of these identity challenges. Um, so to hear from Bill, kind of what are the issues that you're, you're seeing, um, both maybe in terms of scale and being able to actually re respond effectively to, to these identity attacks? So across the industry, uh, terms ITDR and zero trust have been widely used uh, and loosely used, in my opinion, because no one really has any standardization around it. So what does it really mean to everybody else? Uh, from my peers and from our perspective, you know, what we're seeing a lot of is um, not only limiting access controls or, or across our different environments, specifically privilege access, but then um, specifically around ITDR, you know, identity threat detection and response. You know, the biggest factor to us is how do you respond to a potential threat that you're going to have within your system? You know, things that we've seen in the past, uh, including whether it be um, phishing attacks and gaining access through these environments, but then also gaining access by creating a new account, you know, disguising it as a service account, whether it be MTM, um, Okta, and other areas of, of realizing that this access is being granted through a phishing attack or through other areas. So not only detecting what we have in place right now, so critically checking every... Um, privilege access, but then if something is granted, going through the automation process of removing that before the threat can even take place. So what I mean by that is anytime you're going through this, if somebody has access to your system in fit for 15 minutes, you know, 15 minutes is a long time to be able to create other accounts and then validate those accounts and, and continue to gain that access and harder for a company to detect it. So using optimize and ping, you know, the, the idea is we want to um, Curb that trend and be able to stop the stop the access granted immediately and be able to review that before it's actually fully there. So mm -hmm. the idea is that we want to, um, you know, what you're seeing in the industry is how do we prevent it in the initial process? Like we do not want that access to be granted without somebody reviewing it at a higher level for verification. Right. And additionally, you know, we want to make sure that um, also potential threats. You know, from other areas of the country or around the world, sorry, or um, MFA fatigue, uh, different, you know, uh, impossible travel. These things are also being adjusted for and blocked again before the, the threat or the you know, intrusion takes place. So, in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of what we've seen with our peers, is we want to block, rather block more, you know, and, and discuss it afterwards than have somebody in our system for four hours. Uh, be able to gain that data and then have to respond to that at a later time. Right. Well, so, so that's interesting. I mean, can you share how you kind of balance between, you know, putting in the right amount of friction for the business without put, having too much friction for the business? Like how, how, you're, how you're approaching that? Yeah. So that's a, that's a very fair question and a, a very big topic of conversation because if you're blocking users, you have the potential of having a um, false positive in this area. And, um, you know, something you have to take with grain of salt, uh, you know, on how, how you, what's going to be the best practice for it. Realistically, you're probably always going to have a situation where you unfortunately block somebody when you don't want to. Um, in my opinion, you know, in the opinion of others, I would rather have a false positive in this case once in a great while, other than, um, you know, letting somebody in your system for a short period of time, that is actually a real threat. Uh, with that being said, the technologies are getting better, optimized, paying um, others. And the more data sources that we get into a system, like optimize and ping, the more that we can realistically get a, a better idea of what's a real potentially a real threat uh, versus what's a what's a false threat. So the idea is, you know, obviously we need to evaluate each and any each and every threat and then work with our our vendors to make sure that they're getting the correct data and then they're also adjusting for the potential threat risk as well. 
And um, not only is Optimize and, and Ping already, you know, providing a lot of data when it comes to this scenario, but, you know, working with other vendors to help uh, from device posture to, uh, you know, even Microsoft to be able to, to provide a lot more data for us to really detect properly so we don't have these false positives. Mm -hmm. Okay. So from from uh, from authorized from ping from from all the sources how are you leveraging that 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 context to actually make smarter decisions w can you describe that process for us a little bit kind of what what is it that you're looking for that that you're able to now see that says okay this is this is where i need to be going this is what i need to to block this is where i need to you know maybe change my controls here it's a couple different a couple of different areas so uh, the biggest thing is going to be uh, mfa fatigue uh, ip impossible travel uh, device posturing. Those are three huge areas. Uh, we also have non-human identities and areas of that where we want to detect a lot, a lot closer. Um, Ping Protect as their product to be able to detect, you know, um, a lot of that, including bot intrusion and optimize and then getting that data within optimize to get a, a additional risk score um, based off not only Ping, but then Azure, uh, Delinea, other products that we have in place and more products you know to come so we can get an additional risk score but the idea is you know specifically to get um as much data as we can within specifically areas where it's it's kind of hard to hard to potentially grab so ip impossible travel and mfa fatigue are two big ones as well as um, spoofing sms and email. Now we're not, we, we've gone completely away from SMS and email, specifically mm -hmm. with workforce identities. So we're trying to, you know, limit our, our areas of concern. But the idea is that, you know, um, we want to be able to detect all of these things before they even become a problem. And that's where Optimize and PIN come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we have a question for Lauren um, from the crowd. With identity being the authentication authority in an enterprise, what benefit do you see customers receiving from the enhanced visibility into their IDAS from Optimize? Yeah, it's a great question. And you know, when I look at, you know, identity management really has two factors. You're either in the authentication authority role. And so with requests coming in and needing to authenticate, you know, someone needs all the signals they can get to be able to say, hey, I know who this person is. I know the device that they're sitting on. And I know um, what entitlements they may have because all those are, again, just signals to get to know the user better and get to know the device better. And then once you're post-authentication, now you're in the access, really the resource protection realm. And it's another area that signals are important because, you know, based on data that Optimize can give us, you know, it's you may be entitled, but have you accessed, accessed this you know, resource within the last two weeks? Or you know, is this the same device in the same pattern, um, in the same network location, the same context? And all those are, again, good signal data to let me know who you are and let me know the device. And when I find anomalies, when I find things that are not quite a good match, those signals will help inform either that authentication flow or that authorization flow and telling us let's deny or let's go re-authenticate, or let's go re-verify, or introduce some kind of, you know, less frictionless approach and getting them in. But yeah, it's all about the the signals and the data and understanding what the user's accessing, what the device can access, and when. Mm -hmm. Okay. That yeah, it does. It does. Um, this one's for Gal. Um, we're seeing a lot of different terms thrown out there kind of in the identity space. It's, there's been a big explosion the past couple of years. It seems like, you know, ITDR, but there's also Keem. And I think there's a lot of crossover and a lot of people trying to figure out what exactly is Keem, what exactly is ITDR, and how much do they need to be integrated with, with one another in order to actually create an effective identity security solution. So if you can kind of talk, give what exactly do you see each of those, you know, those two categories and how do you see them playing with each other and with some of the other um, identity security spaces such as PAM and, and CSPM or other, you know, related areas? And, and, and how should people think about, you know, creating a strategy out of those, those technologies? Sorry, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's see how, uh, how well I uh, do on this. So 
for starters, I don't like the fruit salad of terms that uh, people have to deal with in security. Uh, I'm sure Bill as uh, the buyer person uh, even likes it less than I do. Um, but uh, it, it, that, that's not the point. The point is what, you're, what, what problem do you need to solve, right? And the core problem that I think all organizations need to solve is securing identity uh, uh, properly. And that includes an infrastructure layer, and as in every domain, it includes a security monitoring layer. For identity and authorization, as Lauren mentioned earlier, it breaks into the authentication and authorization. And in a lot of senses, in the same way, it breaks into the ITDR, which is mostly focused on the threat detection and on the identity side, but also on the way that the identity is being used. And then it breaks down to the other piece of CIM or the actual authorizations, but also touching on the identity and the posture mostly. And this is what CIM and ITDR are in essence, but they are not separate pieces in my opinion. In my opinion, CIM and ITDR are one thing. They are part of one discipline of identity security. You can't make a, the, the same signal that would apply to um, uh, I don't know, a, a regular user uh, with a phishing resistant MFA or a, an administrative user without MFA could have a very different meaning from a security perspective, right? So ITDR can't work without the understanding of the privileges and the users it is seeing. And this understanding comes from the CIM that monitors the privileges and the actual posture of the, uh, the identity environment. So from my perspective, ITDR is about threat detection response to identity layer attacks. And that includes identify who is at risk, who is under attack, who has been compromised. And the focus is on two things. One is protecting the tier zero assets, the identity infrastructure, the core IDA systems um, uh, that you are using. Uh, and the other thing is uh, dealing with the tier one assets, your applications, your environments, and actually looking at the identity configuration there, looking at the privileges there, understanding what's actually been happening there. Um, so ITDR is less about the privilege though. Uh, this is where it starts to be keen and this is where the things are overlapping. Um, and the most important thing in my perspective is after we get this picture of, hey, the CIM is telling us this is the uh, posture that you have, uh, this is the overall Privileges, ITDR is telling you as this is the threats. The most important thing is combining this picture and applying actual response to it using automated workflows as we were talking about earlier. So hope that made sense. Absolutely. And it actually leads me into my next question for, for Lauren, talking about when you're having conversations with customers, what, what are you hearing about how they're actually thinking about implementing DaVinci and, and using the, the automated workflows to respond to uh to incidents and, and and even just as posture issues like what, what's their what's their approach that you're hearing from them yeah a lot of them you know first talk about they want it to be you know insightful so they want to know what's going on and that's where just having the signals and be able to you know present what's happening in the environment those are very critical and Vinci allows for ability to look at which environments are connected. Um, part of our Ping One Protect product allows for a dashboard of all of the signals and events that are happening within the environment. I know Optimize has uh, the same kind of dashboarding to look at the security events um, that are going on. Next is the where DaVinci comes in, in many cases, is if there is a signal and a threat um, based on whatever policy, either be at a score or based on a context. Customers um, now are creating environments where it's not just allow deny or allow block, but they are allow um, them in, but with certain actions. And so what DaVinci's enabled them to do is based on the severity, um, I'll talked about adding MFA creates a very different security posture. Customers saying, let's add MFA, now, it may not be username, password, maybe something that's a biometric or some other kind of you know, authentication approach that allows them in, or you can even go as strong as I want you to re-verify. And that can be with a liveness check or some kind of doc document authentication just to ensure that um, I know who that user is. So if I can really just you know, leave an answer, it's to say that customers are looking for self-service mitigation. They want to make sure that the experience is secure. 
um, but they want to make sure that it's seamless and how you add friction into that flow doesn't always have to go back to that traditional mechanism. It's more of, you know, what is the best factor for the context to be able to reassess who you are, re-identify who you are before you allow them in. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, so for Bill, kind of moving away from technology exactly for a second, but more kind of organizational, how, how are you finding the best way to communicate internally within your organization? And it's, it's not a small organization. How, how to actually uh, think about identity security issues? Um, because you know, no, nobody likes to have to log log in a bunch of times or, or deal with too many challenges. But how are you expressing to them the needs? Like, okay, you know, here's the risks that are out there, and and here's here's how here's how we're approaching it as an organization to keep you secure. So a couple of scenarios is one, obviously, education uh, to our end users, to our senior leadership executives to validate that they're on board with you know what what we're currently doing. And the biggest factor is not only um, having the security in place, which a lot of it is is back end, which I'll you know discuss with you here in a moment, but then also making it as easy as possible for them to be able to log into the systems. And that's something that DaVinci does really well for us uh, with the orchestration of, of Optimize. But realistically, it, the whole goal is to to remove additional factors of authentication and do a lot more checks in the background, which is what Ping and Optimize allow us to do. So the idea is not to make it harder on them for additional checks, validation, and then a lot of the things that we do, they don't see. So mm -hmm. we are a password organization. We do that completely through DaVinci. So we're able to remove one factor of authenticating, which makes it a lot easier on them. In fact, while we have a lot more checks in place, our end users have found it a lot easier to be able to authenticate to our systems. Um, right. That is that is the whole point of you know ITDR and using DaVinci along with that is let's not let's not make it a burden on them. Let's actually make it easier. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the controls are going to be in the back end, which allows to uh, evaluate and detect um, threats. You know, without them even knowing. Right. So I, I mean. Getting all that in place, though, having Authomize and, and, and Ping identity um, in place, what was your approach for actually kind of con explaining and explaining it internally, both within the security team to say, hey, this is something we need, this is a direction we need to go in and kind of selling that within the organization as well, you know, like to, to, to map out here's how it's going to be actually benefit us. Well, the biggest, biggest factor is, you know, we've had detections or we've had threats in the past that have impacted the company uh, that, you know, from an executive standpoint, they already knew that some of these things would be, be in place. From an end user and security perspective, you know, it's it's showing the technologies that we that are available to us. It's reviewing the, the issues that are out there. Um, last year and this year have been a, a big key factor on that. So one of the big reasons why we chose Ping to start with was the, uh, you know, competitors that they had had, had issues. So, you know, transitioning over to a new IDP or new security infrastructure is, is not an easy task by any means, right? It takes a lot of work, sure. a lot of energy, and a lot of manpower to, to do that. Uh, but realistically, when, I, when I'm looking at this as a, you know, to try to explain to leadership and to end users, which, yes, that is, you know, concerning thing to them, you know, we need to express what it means to the company. And if we were to get, you know, impacted, um, in a negative way, what does it what does it mean? Like how long could we be down for? What kind of job impact could it have on them from an end user perspective? And from senior leadership, what is it going to cost? So moving to a organization like Ping um, and Optimize allowed us to really express that in a different manner by show, showcasing what they're capable of doing. And at the end of the day, while it was a lot of work, it was beneficial as we're able to accomplish a lot more. Um, we tried to go past or listen to the past uh, as an example and use more threat detection around device posturing with you know, Ping's competitors and some of Optimize's competitors as well with very little luck. So the fact is, is that, you know, we're looking for the best platform to be able to, to do what we need to do. And we were able to move to a much more secure environment in really about six months worth of time. And that's an incredible accomplishment, you know, being able to move 
move over to Ping in less than 60 days, and then move over to DaVinci and using tools like Optimize in about another 60 day period of time. That's an incredible turnaround for, for teams small as we are. So mm-hmm. to be able to convince people on that is, is really showcasing what the product can do and um, using specific examples around their competitors and the issues that we've had with say MGM and um, Caesars and so many others over the past year really helped helped us to be able to show we need to make a move because their direction that we were going is making us less secure. Mm-hmm. I, I'll ask, what was your kind of biggest aha moment or, or you know, what you're hearing from, from peers kind of after MGM? It's really verification now. That is the next step in all of this is how do you verify, you know, something, how do you get something in place where you're really going to be able to protect your environment? As mm-hmm. much as we would like to, you know, uh, detect threats in a live manner, um, there's still the human factor. And that's something that we need to all account for. And that's kind of a hot moment going, okay, how do we address this now differently than an actual uh, potential threat? Um, or a, I'd say a backdoor threat, right? So now we need to work with Ping, work with you know um, our internal teams to be able to verify not only our employees, but we're also looking at this from a customer perspective as well. You know, best best way to verify and protect our customer data. Mm-hmm. So you know, as we continue to roll out products, it, it's the next step in evolution. Is you know, really we're going to see more phishing and um, impersonation going forward is how, what's the best way to be able to handle that. So, okay. you know, I think from MGM perspective, we learned a lot and there, I think as an industry, we learned a lot and it's going to change for the better, but it's going to take some time. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Um, that's it from the questions that I, that I have. Anybody have any, any closing remarks, any, anything else that they, they, that they would like to ask? So I, I would like to jump in on one thing on MGM. So uh, Bill and the NAF, they are very advanced. So they already had the monitoring for changes in the configuration in the identity infrastructure. But what we're hearing in a lot of customer conversations with organizations that are less advanced is that they are just coming to the realization that in addition to the verification piece, there's also a need to monitor the changes to the identity infrastructure configuration. Because in the MGM attack, what the attackers did is they targeted the Active Directory sync servers and the added identity provider into the system configuration in order to take over other accounts. So these type of things are also a concern, just a concern that NAF has addressed even before the MGM attack. Right. Yeah. And I was I was just going to add on that. I think the the point when you can you know know the user, know the device better, um, you bring that early on in the process. And as Gal described, I mean, you know, you need to have it across all the infrastructure. It isn't just my end users; it's the privileged users that need to be monitored, and it's the systems um, that are really at that tier zero that need to be monitored. And so, making sure they have all the right insights to then be able to then provide signals to be able to make decisions. It's that decisioning within the authentication authorization process, I think that's very key. And it's why I love this relationship with Optimize. I think it makes a huge difference when we look at it, It isn't just end user signals that we're gathering, but we're also getting um, system level, we're getting privileged users, we're getting um, all the other entitlements in there. So to me, it's a really a great solution that we've got. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Wonderful. All right, I think that's that's time for us. I'd really like to thank our panelists for joining us today uh, and everyone who joined us as well to, for sharing your morning. And uh, if you'd like to learn more, please visit us. We're, we're at Authomize, uh, Ping Identity. Visit them as well. Uh, Bill? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, NAF, NAF as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you need a mortgage. Yeah. Exactly. We're, exactly. We're here for you. Who yeah. does it? it? It's, it's important. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Thank you.